the church has got a pride problem because she ain't got drunk in the Holy Ghost in a while. There's a high glory that won't give you a hangover, but it'll cause you to walk over devils and tread over circumstances. Hallelujah, and have victory in every situation. Somebody shout smeared. Somebody shout smeared. changes when we break the alabaster box Woo! the glory starts to spill out and it causes the religious people to talk hello everyone and welcome to long for truth my name is daniel long sitting next to me is my lovely wife robin hi everyone so i know you saw the opening video yes the topic for today's video is drunk in the spirit which isn't really an actual thing no it is not why don't uh before we start uh you know looking at some video clips why don't we just talk a little bit about the history of being drunk in the spirit which again is not a thing not necessarily a truism um so rodney howard brown is known to have brought this drunk in the spirit to the toronto blessing and most of the things that you read say he was the first one that brought it that's not necessarily mm -hmm. true it goes way back to i think we were talking about the shakers mm -hmm. in the 1700s and 1800s in some of the revivals that we've talked about the Cambridge revival there was um the holy the holy laughter and these weird manifestations yep. that are all part of being drunk in the spirit so um, it goes way back, all of the different manifestations. I think the difference is that today you see all of those manifestations prominent. All around the room and all over the world through the live stream now mm -hmm. in a lot of charismatic yeah. and, and churches so that's the difference yep and you and I looked at some old newspaper clippings that I have that goes back to 1786 and the Shakers like you mentioned there are also the Millerites that uh, were another group that were doing the same thing so this is not anything new it wasn't anything that started originally with Rodney Howard Brown you're right. Nothing new, but much more accepted today. Mm, absolutely. So why don't we start off with a good definition yep. of spiritual drunkenness? Let's do it. Um, and I'm just reading right out of Wikipedia. It refers to a phenomenon seen in some Christian denominations, particularly those associated with Pentecostalism and the charismatic movement, in which individuals who are said to be experiencing intense momentary visitations of or even possession by the Holy Spirit exhibit a range of behaviors resembling signs of moderate to severe alcoholic inebriation, including unsteadiness, uncontrollable laughter, silly expressions or gestures, verbal or nonverbal shouting, sudden intense fatigue and temporary unconsciousness the experiences are meant to bring people into a deeper encounter of god's love power presence and joy yeah and so, so it's it's one of the things that we were discussing earlier is people are going after this experience of this supposed mm -hmm. euphoria that the holy spirit gives instead of the scriptures instead of allowing god's word to fill them with joy they actually are allowing experience to fill them with joy <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
more and more of going back to what Sarah Young had said before mm. she wrote Jesus Calling. Like, I love the scriptures, but I just wanted something more. Just got to have something more. You know, it's yep. not Jesus isn't enough. The script or the, I'm sorry, the scriptures, the Bible isn't enough. It's good. And, you know, it's it's need. We need it. But it's just not you know, everything that I can, you know, experience, the experience is, is more important to me than the uh, actual Bible itself. Let's go ahead and start with a clip, shall we? Yeah. We're going to look at uh, some drunken fools um, in, uh, in, in you'll recognize both of these. And that's what I'm calling this video, drunken spirit, drunken fools, or at least a, maybe that's what I'll call the video. About I don't the know. foolish Kenneths. Yeah, the two, the two foolish Kenneths. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's not demonic at all. Um, so, and that is called <laughs> experiencing the presence of God. Yeah, according to, um, you know, the, these fools. Anyway, so we're going to uh, talk about something here that is um, very, very important, and it is throughout the New Testament, especially in the mm -hmm. epistles of Paul, and that is that God does not condone this stuff. As a matter of fact, God is a God of order. And he demands and commands through the through the Apostle Paul. And these and when, when we look at this passage, this passage is full of imperatives. These mm. this is a command. This is how we are to be. So Robin, um sure. I think you I'm have in, a few verses for yeah, us. Yeah, I'm in First Corinthians chapter fourteen, starting in verse twenty six. What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all be encouraged, and the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints, the women should be kept silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission, as the law also says. If there is anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Or was it from you that the word of God came? Or are you the only ones it has reached? If anyone thinks that he is a prophet or spiritual, he should acknowledge that the things I am writing to you are a command of the Lord. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. So one thing to keep in mind when we're looking at this passage, and really any passage in 1 Corinthians, is the overall context of what is happening here. The Corinthians were a very messed up church. There were yes. divisions in the church. There was uh, a huge confusion about spiritual gifts. There were people getting drunk at the Lord's Supper. There was sexual immorality. Paul was not writing this church to commend them. He was writing this church to correct them. And so even in this passage, the, the context of this is disorder. The, the Corinthians were, um, ex, you know, they were a disorderly congregation, and Paul mm -hmm. was writing them to correct them and to show them. You can almost see Paul saying the exact same thing to the people in the clip that we just watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So let's go ahead and let's look at a uh, another clip. Um, and uh, this is uh, a guy by the name, and it's still in the same 
uh, the, the same um, congregation or the, the, same, the same video service, service mm-hmm. that Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagen were in. This guy is um, Marty Blackwelder. Blackwelder. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to do it here. <clears throat> well. <laughs> better now Ooh. well just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me oh just one dose of the Holy Ghost not enough for me just one dose is not enough for me yeah, not laughing here. This that's just uh, extremely blasphemous, and that is just a good example of what a disorderly service looks and like. And there is were, God honored by that behavior? No, not at all. And and look how many people were in that service, and it was pandemonium. Chaos. Yeah, and if in any of the apostles, the apostle Paul saw something like that, he would never call the leaders of the of that church or those churches that participate in that kind of activity Christians. He 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 would not. Mm, shall None we of read them would. Some more yeah, verses? I want to I want to talk first for just for a minute yeah. before you read about self control. The Bible makes it very clear that Christians are not to act like this; they are to have self control. I also want to say that this. I know these videos or that these video clips are, you know, going back uh, um, in time a little bit. But this stuff is not. Uh, it you hasn't know, gone. It anywhere. hasn't gone away. It's right. still prevalent. It's still mm-hmm. going on right now. So let's talk about self control, and then the Bible has a whole lot to say about being sober minded. So why don't we start in Galatians chapter five, Sounds verses good. twenty-two through twenty-four? But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness self-control against such things there is no law and those who belong to christ jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires those who belong to christ jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires did that service look like the holy spirit was leading the people there or did it look fleshly did it look exactly chaos exactly that was not no in no way shape or form were those people had those people crucified the flesh and may i just comment even the song as catchy as it was and i keep humming it in my head just one dose of the holy ghost not enough for me but just the lyrics themselves yeah. I, I can't get enough of the holy ghost doesn't god give us the Holy Ghost we get dwells the, in us. Yes, he dwells within us. The moment we believe in Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit, all of the Holy Spirit. We don't get him in little doses here and there. Uh, we get the uh, we get all of him. And so even the song is uh, doctrinally not sound so right. any anyway so we've, moving on to some more scripture yeah moving on to okay. uh, another passage of scripture here because the bible does talk much about being sober minded sure first timothy 3 2 says therefore an overseer must be above reproach the husband of one wife sober minded self-controlled respectable hospitable able to teach and first timothy three eleven, their wives likewise must be dignified not slanderers but sober minded faithful in all things now, the leaders of that 
clip that you just saw, the leaders of the church in that clip that you just saw and Kenneth Hagin, I'm, I'm, I'm including Kenneth Hagin and Kenneth Copeland because I saw Gloria Copeland, Copeland sitting there in the mm-hmm. audience. <laughs> are those leaders wives? Are they sober minded? Are those pastors in that congregation sober minded, dignified, n- dignified? Not at all. They are disobedient to scripture. First Thessalonians 5, 8, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Second Timothy 4, 5, as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. All right. So let's uh, look at another clip really quickly yeah. to give uh, uh, another Example. example of this and this is coming from supposedly the guy who started all of this which he didn't as we we talked about in the beginning of the video rodney howard brown the Our holy ghost bartender the holy ghost bartender there are realms of the holy ghost that god wants to take the church into this has been happening a lot in the meetings lately one night i sang my whole message sang the altar call I think I sang for about an hour and a half I'm telling you people left that night totally bombed on the Holy Ghost I mean I'm talking about drunk drunk but let's be open to the Holy Ghost A couple of really quick comments about the verses that these people use um, to justify their behaviors. Mm -hmm. Um, The first one, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. They're saying they're saying that being filled with spirit is like being drunk with wine. And that is not what God's word says at all. It's contrasting two very different ideas. Yeah. They say, um, you see, why would God even compare the two if the two weren't so similar? Being drunk with wine is like being drunk with the spirit, exactly. you know, filled with the spirit. They're, they're, they're very similar. No, it's it's not what that's talking right. about at all. And I think a lot of the religious um, services back then, people were drinking alcohol and of the grape so that he was saying, no, don't do that. Rather be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he's given a contrast there. Yes. As a person is drunk and controlled by wine, so a person should be controlled by the Holy Spirit, not by uh, and alcohol. And goes on to say what that involves yeah. and entails. So the other um, passage would be in Acts 2, where um, the Holy Spirit um, came upon the group and they all started speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. And the naysayers said, look at them, they're drunk. And Peter said, no, we're not drunk. It's nine in the morning. Right. Um, so they use that to say, see, these people who were filled with the Holy Spirit were acting like drunk people. You wonder what just happened? <laughs> we're moving into an um, woo, amazing anointing. Yeah. Yeah. And they were, uh, you know, you, you hear that all the time. So, well, of course, well, the, you know, they, they must have been acting like this because they would have never thought they were right. drunk. Right. They weren't just speaking in foreign languages because they wouldn't have said they were drunk. Yeah. And one example that we found, which mm-hmm. was a really good example, was Hannah in yep. the Old Testament when Hannah was just praying her heart out to the Lord and sobbing. And I think she was speaking, but no, um, no, no words noise. were coming out of her right. mouth. She was praying silently. And the story is Hannah really wanted a child. Mm. She was barren. She didn't have children Distraught. and she desperately wanted a child and a, and a woman without a child, uh, during that time, they were looked upon, um, as being cursed by the Lord, you know? Yeah. And so Hannah desperately wanted the child and her Elkanah's other wife um, had 
plenty of children, and she would mock Hannah. So Hannah was in uh, the temple and, or in the tabernacle, mm. and she was praying. Pouring her heart out. Yeah, that God would mm. give her a child. Yeah. And when Eli saw her, because she was praying and no words were coming out of her mouth, he said, he thought she was drunk. Yes. So it's and and we know for a fact just because so so just because someone's speaking in a different language or someone's speaking silently in prayer, you know, Eli himself thought Hannah was drunk. So the people in Acts chapter two, they didn't have to see people falling around and and, and acting foolish and, to think that they were right. drunk. They were just speaking in other languages and they were mocking. Yeah. Yeah, it was not a serious, yeah. hey, are you guys drinking? Like, right. Look at these silly men. So the verses that these guys try to use for being drunk in the spirit, well, they don't. Hold water. Right. They don't so, hold water. They don't. So anyway. Okay. Are we doing more verses or do you have another clip? I do have another clip. Let's this is that. another clip by um, the Holy Ghost bartender. It was... <laughs> It was kind of like I got struck by lightning, to be honest. It was like you got struck by lightning. Yeah, when I looked at you. <laughs> and then you pulled me over with the camera. And everything just went white. <laughs> and you were talking about getting caught up. And I got caught up. <laughs> and it was so good. <laughs> and, um, it's real, isn't it? Yeah. What do you say to somebody who says, well, maybe you're putting this on? What do you say to them? <laughs> they have to experience it. Mm -hmm. So better, better felt than telt. Mm -hmm. Jesus. That's it. And so just to get, oh. let you guys know, that was not Ben Roethlisberger standing behind... <laughs> <laughs> Rodney there. I was telling Robin, man, that guy looks just like Ben Roethlisberger, if you know who Ben Roethlisberger is anyway. Well, Thank you, Danny. Yes. Anyway, so again, sober-mindedness is preached by the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter. And just what he said at the end, better felt than telt. Yeah. That is not the gospel. Not at all. The gospel is to be told. It's not to be, I need to go do my own thing, have my own experience with the Lord, giggle like a fool, or mm -hmm. act inebriated. And that's me experiencing God's presence in my life. Yeah, not at all. Not at and all. Peter uh, definitely says the opposite of that. Yeah, so I'm in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 4, 7. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. cool and he cool he's going in you are a mess i think i'll just fill you with the holy ghost right now and he just i just got so drunk in the holy ghost that i went to sleep and had a great sleep god worked it all out Amen. like he always does but you know what god knew i i needed that and see you are you you do too yeah no you don't you don't need any of that you need to run as far away from that as possible. That is so ugly. That is so ungodly. And it is so blasphemous. Everything changes when we break the alabaster box. The glory starts to spill out. 
and it causes the religious people to talk. So scripture is not the authority anymore. It is mm. our experience with God when yeah. we're having all these manifestations that are actually the authority about whether we have a relationship with the Lord or not. Absolutely. And I want to show you something really, really interesting here. Now, um, I'm going to well, I hit the wrong thing here, but let me go over to the screen here. I want to take you over here to uh, Lagos. This is the Bible program that I'm using now with and I got to I'm sorry, I have to do this really quickly, but just kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing here. So I've got First uh, Peter 4, 7 open. OK, and it says the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober minded for the sake of your prayers. OK, I want to show you what this word sober minded is. The definition of this word in BDAG and BDAG is this right here. This is uh, a uh, very uh, popular uh, Greek English lexicon that's used by all kinds of people. And I also have Laonida open here, but I've got BDAG connected to um, the ESV so that when I click on the word, it's going to give the defin definition over here. So right now I've got it on what it means to be sober minded, but watch, well, watch what it says when I click over here to, to, I'm sorry, it was uh, self control. Now it's on sober minded. Look at what the definition says here to be free from every form of mental and spiritual drunkenness, excess, passion, rashness, confusion. So the end of all things mm -hmm. is near. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober minded. Don't be spiritually drunk, at least this definition here, according to BDAG. So as you see right here, the definition of this Greek word, which is uh, uh, this word right here, and I am, I'm not going to even try to pronounce that word, Thank although you. I do have helps in Lagos that would allow me to do that. So I'll show you. This is really just kind of off the thing here. Totally I can do a, topic. that's all right. I can do a word Bible word study of this right here, and then we can pronounce that word. Nafel. And that's what that word is. Anyway, the point is, is that the Bible makes it very clear that we are not to be doing these kinds of things. These We are to be sober minded as Christians. None of this is in any way being sober minded and none of these leaders, none of these pastors are being obedient to scripture and mm -hmm. they're, they're, you know, at best, um, not acting as Christians and at worst, they're not Christians at all. That's true. So we have a couple of scriptures to share with mm -hmm. you that, um, show us what God's word does tell us to do. Yeah. Uh, first one I'm in second Peter. Chapter one, starting in verse five, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. Um, we also have a couple of verses in Colossians chapter three, starting in verse 12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. So what is ruling in your hearts? The peace of Christ, not um, the drunkenness of the spirit. And, I, and, and if they are drunk by a spirit, it's not with the Holy Spirit. It's with another spirit. You're right. So thanks very much for joining us today. And um, we really do appreciate all you who subscribe to us and all the comments that we receive. Um, it's very difficult for us to respond to each one, but we do thank you and just want to we encourage read them you. All. We do. And we thank you very much for all of the nice things that have been said about uh, both of us being together in the video. And so God bless you and Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Bye.